Hi everyone, I'm Gilad from Extreme.io and today we're going to talk about Extreme.io X2 integration with Virialized Orchestrator and Virialized Automation. This is our VRA interface, which we will get to soon. This is the XMS that manages our Extreme.io cluster. And this is our vSphere environment. Over here we have the VRO tool, uh, which is where we run all of our workflows. Now, in order to integrate VRO with Extreme.io, you need to import the Extreme.io plugin, which is right here. And this gives us uh, Extreme.io actions, which are all of those actions, and Extreme.io workflows, uh, which is under library Extreme.io. Now we have the more basic workflows, which are stuff like uh, volume management where you can uh, create a volume or delete a volume or expand a volume, stuff like that. Or uh, consistency group management, where you can create a consistency group or add a volume to it. And basically all of the operations which can be done through your XMS can be done through VRO workflows. On the other hand, we have the more high level workflows, which are stuff that combine extreme IO and VMware functionalities. You can see here workflows that uh, involve data stores, hosts, vCenter clusters, uh, virtual machines. Those are complex workflows which run procedures on both your extreme I.O. and VMware infrastructure. Let's see an example of one high-level workflow. Uh, for instance, the data store exposed storage. Now, this workflow creates an extreme I.O. volume. It maps it to a vCenter host or cluster and creates a VMware uh, data store on it. Let's see how it goes. We select our XMS server and cluster. We choose to create a volume. Click Next. We assign a volume name. We give it two terabytes of size. Click Next. We choose to provision it to uh, a vCenter cluster rather than a host. We assign a data store name and the size of the data store to be provisioned. We click Submit and we can see the workflow starting to run with all of its steps. As soon we'll be able to see an extreme IO volume created on our XMS. Here we go. Uh, this is the volume. And we'll also be able to see a new VMware data store. Uh, now we can also see through its device backing that it has the same NAA number as the extreme IO volume over here. This means that our workflow has completed. Here we go. And just like that, we created a data store on an extreme IO volume using a VRO workflow. Now, one of the strongest advantages of VRO is uh, creating or designing your own VRO workflows. And we can see an example of one right here. We created a new create, test, and dev environment workflow, which replicates your production environment to a test and dev environment. And let's see what it does. We choose here a vCenter server instance and a VMware folder of the source uh, virtual machines. We choose the production folder. We choose here a parent folder for the new destination environment, a destination cluster, and let's say we create an environment for our analytics department. So we choose analytics and click submit. We can see the workflow starting to run. Now what happens in the background Soon we'll be able to see uh, a new analytics environment, analytics uh, VM folder, and the virtual machines from the production environment being replicated here into the analytics environment. We have here a couple of Windows servers and a Linux server, and those all will be cloned here into this environment, and its additional storage will also be replicated from production environment to the test and dev environment using extreme IO ICDM capabilities. We can see here that the secondary storage of this VM is provisioned through the production data store. And in Extreme IO, we'll soon be able to see a copy of the production data store volume here in the volume snapshot groups. Here we go. And the secondary storage of our new environments, virtual machines, will be provisioned from that data store. Here we go. We can already see the new data store being provisioned from the extreme IO volume and their names will also be renamed soon to a more meaningful names and we can probably already see as we can see down here that new application storage has been provisioned from our new data store 
Here we go, we also have the new meaningful name of the data store, production data store data analytics. And the extreme volume name has been changed as well. Now, as you can see here, since we are using extreme IO volume copies, the logical space of the entire volume snapshot group remains nearly the same. So the copy volume of our source volume due to extreme IO ICDM capabilities adds almost none additional capacity to our storage. And we can provision many test and dev environments like that. Our workflow has probably already ended, as we can see here, and we have our new test and dev environment called Analytics. Now, another feature of VRO is you can run uh, VRO workflows through your uh, vSphere web client. You can see it through here uh, in the vRealize Orchestrator menu. We'll choose to run the delete test and dev environment, which we just created which is uh, this workflow that we designed over here. And through the vRealize Orchestrator menu, we can see that we can run this workflow uh, on a VM folder. And let's see how it goes. We'll go to VMs and Templates, choose our Analytics folder, select the All vRealize Orchestrator plugin action, and select the workflow we want to run. We choose here a vCenter server instance and a VMware folder, which represents our test and dev environment. Uh, click Next, select Run Now, and Finish. Uh, now we'll be able to see the workflow that we are running on our VRO instance as well. Soon we'll see all of our uh, virtual machines disappearing, uh, and at the end also our data store and extreme IO volume. We can see which steps we're on on our VRO instance. We're still deleting virtual machines. Here we're in the data store delete uh, part. As you can see it's going on over here. Data store is being unmounted uh, from the vCenter cluster. Being removed. And at the end the extreme air volume is deleted. Now let's talk about VRA. Uh, first of all let's log in to our VRA interface. VRA, which stands for vRealize Automation, is where we can uh, use VRO workflows and other workflows to provision uh, self-service and automated uh, procedures to a private cloud client. In here, in the design uh, section, we have the Anything as a Service menus. And in here, we can configure the custom resources that we want to enable our consumer to create the Anything as a Service Blueprints, which uh, configures how to create these resources, and Resource Actions, which configure which kinds of actions we can run on a provisioned resource. Let's see how it looks if we want to, for instance, provision a new data store. Uh, this is a service we created that we are enabling our, our consumers to run through the VRA catalog. Now we ask our consumers to provide several inputs uh, for their new data stores. Uh, let's say we want to provision two data stores. We'll call them new data store. Data store size will be 4 terabytes. And we'll select to provision it to the prod servers cluster. Once we click submit, the request will be submitted. And we'll be able to see it in the request section as being in progress. Now, when it's in progress, it goes to the VRO instance and start running a VRO workflow. We'll see it over here. It's actually the same workflow which we used to expose storage previously through VRO. Only now it's being run from our VRA interface. In the background, all of the procedures which happened before will happen now as well. We can see new data stores here and new extreme IO volumes here. That means that both our VRO workflow has completed and the request as well. And we can see it's successful and when we go to items, we'll be able to see our two new data stores. We can also press uh, one of our data stores to see information about it. We can see the name, capacities. We can see extreme IO information, which we uh, personally added to this resource in order to see which cluster it was provisioned from, the XMS URL, and stuff like that. Now let's go back to the item section. Once we have resources provisioned, we can run our resource actions on them. 
for instance on data stores we uh, created the delete data store and expand data store actions let's run the expand data store action and see how it goes we'll choose a new size six terabytes click submit the request has been submitted we'll also be able to see it here in the request section and on VRO we'll be able to see the data store expand the workflow running to expand our data store let's see it already completed here we go successful we'll go to items and select the data store we'll be able to see its new size of course uh, we'll also be able to see it here on our XMS and obviously on the vSphere web client now you probably see that when running the data store expose workflow from VRO and when running it through uh, VRA we saw entirely two different forms for running this workflow now this is because in here in the anything is a service blueprint for the provision new data store we chose to modify the VRO workflow in VRA as you can see uh, we are able here using these details and constraints tabs we can configure or preset any of the VRO workflow inputs uh, we don't want the consumer uh, to decide on. The XMS server for instance or the vCenter server instance, we want all of these to be set in advanced. We only want our consumer to decide on the number of data stores, the data store names, the data store size and which cluster to provision it to. This interface allows us to offload IT tasks to users without them being required to know a lot about uh, the infrastructure, uh, which storage they provision their data stores from or to which uh, vCenter servers, only basic information that they need to run the workflow. Now let's take a look on more complex procedures that we can do using VRA. As we can see, we added our create test and dev environment blueprint, which uses the VRO workflow that we designed. And now we wanna use it in some composite blueprint. Let's go here to the blueprints menu and see our new developer blueprint. Now in our example, pretend that you have an application team which hires new developers. Now we want any new developer that comes to the team to have its own Active Directory user or maybe email account or a new test and dev environment uh, in its name and this can be done here. As you can see we added two blueprints, uh, one is called create an Active Directory user and the second one is uh, create test and dev environment. This imitates a procedure like we described that we want to create a new Active Directory user and a new test and dev environment for a new developer in our team. Let's see how it goes through the catalog item. I will choose new developer request. Over here in the create test and dev information, you can see that a name will be given according to the Active Directory username. So we will set that. We'll choose to create a new user. Uh, let's call it John. Click submit. And the request has been submitted we can uh, see it in the request section and in our vr workflows uh, we'll be able to see both uh, a create test and dev environment workflow running here we go and also through the active directory uh, workflows folder we'll be able to see already created a new user with password this means that in our Active Directory server over here, once we refresh, we'll be able to see our new user John. And in our vSphere uh, infrastructure, we're already starting to see the new test and dev environment being created. New virtual machines, soon a new data store. Here we go, it will have a meaningful name soon. And of course, a new extreme volume on which the data store is created. We can see that our workflow has ended, meaning we already have a meaningful volume name and a meaningful data store name. Let's go to our VRA interface. The request has completed. Let's go back 
here and we have a new deployment with a new developer with a new Active Directory user named John and a new test and dev environment which our new developer can browse and see how it connects to using this form. Uh, this is pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it and have fun automating your infrastructure. See ya.